Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we will see how to avoid point to point collision in Houdini's particle system. There are some other ways, like for example, to use pop grain node to avoid collision and to respect a P scale. But this method is also very interesting, and we will use matrix in VEX to do this. We will put down a grid. And I am going to remove the polygons and keep only the points. I am going to give some velocity to it. Some curved velocity. Yeah, the points have some velocity and I am going to input it into a pop network. And I am going to emit all the points and only on the first frame. Roller F start. So this is going to emit some particles, but only on the first frame. Yeah. So this is a little bit faster than what I want. Point three. But they are flying all over, like they are uh, moving in y direction also. I am going to constrain the particles to the screen. So the easiest way I, use, I follow to do this is, I just copy the geometry whatever I want and put on a wrangle. And here I am going to give, uh, I mostly use the second input. I am just confused what this will be called. And we get p is equal to min pose. So the min pose function will like uh, attach the points to the closest primitive. One comma v at p. And now if you see the particles are going to be like constrained to the grid, but they are going to like come close to each other and they are going to like overlap with each other. There is nothing stopping them from doing this. We'll add a small pop force. And now they're going to move a little bit randomly. And we have some particles like passing very close to each other or overlapping with each other. And let's try to Stop this from happening. I'm going to use a soft solver for this. Actually, the code should work here too, but uh, I don't know. I didn't have any luck. It didn't work. So I used a separate pop sol soft solver for it. I'm going to put down a wrangle and uh, run it run it over the points. Uh, first thing first, I'm going to find the nearest point. But uh, in this case. Uh, there are going to be the closest point to this point is the same point itself. So we need to find out the second point that is closest to this point. Okay. So we can do this by like uh, using near points, plural, uh, near points function. And it is going to store all the point numbers within a radius in an array. You will see what I mean. I bracket at, we'll call it NP is equal to near points. And the input to 0 and position it's vfp and the third input will be the distance i am going to give like a big distance for now and this should uh, this should create an array that will contain the point number of all the points actually the closest point so if you see the geometry spreadsheet And I'm going to search for NP, the attribute that we created. So you can see the point numbers have like multiple neighbors, but the zero, uh, zeroth input, I mean the first value is always the point number. So zero, zero, one, one, 
So we need to extract the second value from the array. This is the zeroth value and we so we need to extract the first value for every point and we will call it int npt num so near pt num is equal to i bracket at np and again bracket here we are going to access the first input i mean the first value in the array we will search for near sorry npt num For some reason, this is not working. Okay, I didn't assign it as a attribute. I at and we have the closest points point number. Now we can find the distance, but for that we need to know the position of these points. And we can extract the position easily now. We'll call it vector near post is equal to point zero is the input. And we need the position and the and we have the point number i at n pt now so we have the position of the closest point we can find the distance f at dist is equal to distance the current position of the point will be v at p and the closest point's position is near post near post Okay, now we have another attribute, distance. So every point has the closest point, uh, the distance from it to the closest point. Now if you play, you can see like the distance is like going to increase and decrease. Some points are going to be like very close, 0 0.05. And we don't want to let the point come that close. Instead, what we are going to do is we are going to rotate the particle slowly towards any other direction. And we can use matrix to do this. This is like a very simple way to rotate the particles along any axis. In our case, the axis is Y axis. So we are going to do only if F at this is like less than 0 0.3. We are going to create a um, matrix and we will call it uh, uh, rotation or some value matrix so this is going to be matrix 3 and we will call it our we will call it new direction new there is equal to so ident identity matrix so we have to initiate a matrix like this and now we can uh, rotate this value using a rotate function rotate the first value will be the the matrix name so that will be new direction and the second value will be the um, in angle the rotation value in angle so for now we will give a value like 5 um, sorry we need the second value in radians okay we will convert it later and the third one will be the axis in our case it is y axis so we created we we created a new direction now we can multiply it with the velocity is equal to new dir so when the when the point comes like uh, closest closer than 0 0.3 it's it's going to start rotating the particle so the point is going to move away now let's see what happens. You can see like already they are like starting to avoid. But there is like an instant change in the direction. Now for example you can notice these two points. They come closer and immediately they turn and they start moving away from each other. I am going to copy some spears to it just to visualize yeah now we can see if you play you see like they come 
closer and then they like uh, turn uh, towards the opposite direction and they start traveling so we are going to control this rotation value that we are uh, multiplying with the velocity so we are not going to put this inside a if statement because then if the if the distance is less than the certain value every frame it is going to rotate so that is not what we want we are going to rotate it uh, using the distance we'll use the distance to fit the rotation value to a certain level we'll call the attribute f at rotate and first what we'll do is we'll fit the value between two values based on distance so we're going to fit the dist value 0 comma like 0 0.3 maybe so when it is a closest that means when the, if the distance is 0 we need a very higher value of rotation so we'll call it maths rotation we'll create a channel value and then it will be the minimum so so the maximum rotation will be when the point comes like very close close to the other point so at that time i will rotate the point by like value maybe like 10 but this value is in angle we need to convert it into radians so radians and one more bracket and now we can use this attribute here the amount that we want to rotate f at rotate and that's it now we should have a gradual change in the direction when the point come close to each other yeah it's working but you know the rotation value is like probably not enough we are going to increase the value like 30 degree and let's check this now yeah this works actually the particles try to avoid and mostly they are like successful and they are not colliding with each other so if you like this tutorial you should check out my Houdini course it is called dynamic pedestrian systems in Houdini with VEX so it is a Houdini crowds course but it is not for just for crowds crowds artists because it deals with very uh, common commonly used VEX concepts so if you like uh, to if you would like to learn uh, VEX in detail and also if you would like to learn a little bit of Houdini crowd and how to control it precisely using VEX I think you should check out this uh, this course it is in Gumroad and CG circuit you can find the link in the description Thank you.